The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. College football week five was a fun one. We saw all kinds of upsets and surprises and all kinds of fun football to watch. Uh, even though it wasn't big time matchups, it wasn't number one against number five or top 10, top 15, or even top 25 matchups. But we talked about this on Saturday. We talked about how there could be a lot of upsets and surprises like we saw. And then we go over to the NFL and we saw a lot more excitement. We saw uh, we saw CMC have a day. We saw uh, other guys show up. We saw the Bills have an amazing uh, show out. And there was even a celebrity in the house for the Chiefs game. We're going to talk about all of this and much more today on Rising to the Occasion. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're so happy to have you here with us to be able to talk some sports. Like I said, we're going to have to recap everything that went on this weekend. It's always really tough for us to, to get through all of this, but we're going to make sure we get through it quick and easy for you guys today. But before we do, let me first mention our sponsor for, the, for today. And really, it's just us telling you guys about an amazing deal, an amazing deal that you do not want to pass up. And that is just sports books in general. Whatever sports book you want to try, all of the top sports books. And if you go over to rising2.com slash bet, that's R I S I N G T O dot com slash B E T, you can go over there and check out the best sports books on the market. Sports betting has grown and it's been growing in popularity a lot lately, especially with football season coming upon us. We're seeing a lot more of it on TV and all kinds of deals. And Whenever you get into sports betting, it's a lot of fun because it adds a little more excitement as a fan, but line shopping for the best odds really matters. And that's why if any profitable sports better needs to be using multiple sports books and needs to be looking out for the best sports books out there with the best odds. And thankfully, there's never been a better time to get signed up or an easier way to get signed up. And we're, help, we're here to help you get connected with the best promotions in all of the industry of sports betting. You can use our code rising2.com slash bet. And again, that is R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash B-E-T. And go there and it will give you access to all these sports books that are available in your region. And along with that, it will go give you a review of each platform and its and unique features. And most importantly, this page automatically connects you to the top promotions for each of these sports books, allowing you to start line shopping with an enhanced bankroll. For example, I believe if you go over to FanDuel in most states, you can place a $5 bet when you first get signed up by clicking on our link and, and, and signing up through rising2.com slash bet. It automatically adds this to you where you sign up, bet, and bet $5, and it adds $200 to your bankroll automatically, just like that bonus bets in your, your bankroll where you can use that free money, that house money, to then go on and bet and make your own money. So it's it's an amazing way for you guys to get started. If you want to take advantage of these benefits and support our brand, you can use our link. And that is, again, rising2.com slash bet, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O dot com slash bet. The best way to really find any kind of sports book because you find the sports books available to you in your area. And then on top of that, you get all of these amazing deals, get all kinds of amazing promotions. No better way to find and sign up for a sports book. And you just go there. It makes it so easy for you guys. But guys, let's get into our episode today where we're going to talk more about some sports. We'll even talk about some of the bets that we made and some of the good bets we made. We'll also talk about some of the bad bets that we made. But before I do, let's go ahead and bring in my co-hosts for the evening. First, I've got Jeremy. Jeremy, how you doing, man? I'm doing pretty good. Then there was some exciting college football, to say the least, this weekend. Obviously, like as you mentioned, Josh, there was some a lot of upsets. I was really shocked with a lot of the upsets that went down this week and situation in the games. They were really good games to begin with, obviously, seeing scores that come out the way they do and having the outcomes that they did. Like I said, there was a lot of upsets into it, but, I mean, still overall it was a, it was a decent good week of college football, like you said, not being 
big key games or big key people, I should really say, excuse me. But I mean, overall, it was really fun this weekend, but looking forward to this upcoming weekend. I know we got a lot of good college football this weekend. I know you were talking to me about the Red Red River rivalry. So this upcoming weekend of football should really, really be fun, but I'm just looking forward to it. I'm ready to talk some sports with everybody. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And like, like you brought up, it is horns down week. So we're going to be throwing those horns down all week long and making sure that it's very clear who we're rooting for. But we also have the man from Mobile, Alabama, Father Blake himself. Blake, how you doing, man? What is up, fellas? I'm glad to be here. <laughs> Jim. Uh, I'm glad to be here, man. Um, I see at the top Auburn covers. I wish that could say Auburn wins, but uh, a hell of an effort for my guys. I'm I'm proud of them uh, for just being in up against the number one team in the country and and uh, putting on putting on a show for the rest of the country to see that we're slowly getting there, man. In year one, Hugh Freeze has has made a statement and he's saying, hey. Uh, we're going to get back to where we once were, and that's competing at the championship level. And uh, Hugh Free said that he wanted to measure himself uh, up against a gold standard, uh, a gold standard. And so I- I'm proud of them boys, man. And and the weekend of football that was, uh, it it was a heck of a slate. Uh, Duke and Notre Dame, that was a battle, man. Uh, Alabama, I watched a little bit of them. They look like they're getting on track. Uh, your Oklahoma Sooners, they're looking good. Uh, I slapped that at minus 20, uh, won, a little, won a little cheese off of them. Uh, and then the NFL, man, it was uh, – the Bills, they looked impressive. Uh, I thought Zach Wilson had it last night, man, but uh, it was too good to be true. Uh, but uh, Pat Mahomes showing him love after the game, I thought that was, I thought that was good stuff. Uh, but it was a heck of a weekend, and I'm ready to talk about it. Heck yeah, yeah. I mean, like you guys mentioned already, there's a lot to get to, a lot of a lot of fun stuff. Let's let's start off. I mean, I wasn't even going to talk about the Sooners, but I will say you 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 said that you were putting money on the minus twenty. I wasn't going to take it because I wasn't sure. And not only that, but it was just we needed to see what the Sooners can do this week because this week is all preparation for the biggest game really of the year. There is no other bigger matchup all season long for one it's your your big time rivalry uh they've been playing since i think like 1929 or something like that every year uh so i mean it's the the biggest rivalry uh at least to oklahoma fans and then on top of that it's the first time each team has been ranked uh or undefeated since like 2011 so there's a big big part of it and on top of that you look at oklahoma's schedule they don't have anybody this is a cupcake schedule the whole way through and so you really need to handle business everywhere else and really be focused on that Texas game because that Texas game is going to prove a lot for the Oklahoma Sooners. And then that defense starting off, letting up 20 points in, in the first quarter and a half, and then just realizing, whoa, we, we got ahead of ourselves, guys. Let's play real football. And they stopped mm. it, and they went right back to, no, we're not playing this anymore. We're shutting them down and didn't let a single point after that. So I was really happy with how they played overall. Start the game off first drive with a pick six. I think that's where they got too cocky. Because Billy Bowman returned that all the way to the house. Big time blocking for the defense on top of that. And, uh, you know, Iowa State was supposed to have this th- this big offense that was going to slow the Sooners' offense down. Or, sorry, the defense. They are supposed to have a better defense that's supposed to slow the Sooners down. And I think there was too much hype around Oklahoma State. Um, but that's pretty much all I have to say about the Sooners for now. Uh, we will talk a lot more about the Sooners probably Thursday and Saturday both because we've got a big rivalry coming up. Uh, and like I said... Horns down, horns down all week. Uh, so we got all week to be doing it. But let's start off. Let's back up to Utah, Oregon State. Uh, this is where I, I'll admit I was wrong. I, I called this game. I said this is one of my lock-in bets. I thought Utah was an underdog. I, th- I think I locked him in at plus 140. I thought I don't I don't care that, that Cam Rising is not in this game. They've been playing good enough. They've been running, running the ball good enough. I think their defense is the, the decision maker in this game. And I think they win. Not only did they not win – they got kind of killed by this Oregon State team. And I think, guys, I think Oregon State's defense is underrated right now. And that offense is looking good. DJU seems more in 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 tune with his team over there than he ever was with Clemson. Uh, and, and much more consistent over with with, uh, with Oregon State than he ever was with Clemson. Uh, and so, so hats off to him and hats off to this defense. Like I said, just underrated. Um, but Jeremy, I don't know how much you were able to catch that Utah Oregon State game last week on on Friday. I believe this game was. 
Um, but I, like I said, Oregon State, that, that defense really shocked me on how good they were in slowing down uh, they're slowing down Utah's offense, even if they didn't have uh, the, the weapon power of, of Cam and Rising. Yeah, absolutely. I know there's been so much talk with what's what are they going to do without Cam Rising. I mean, you obviously see what they've done without Cam Rising. They've definitely shocked a lot of the people. Heck, they probably shocked a lot of the nation, to be completely honest with you. But, I mean, on the other aspect of it, going on to the other team of Oregon State, I was, um, I was to say the least – I was shocked by how how significantly good their defense was. Like they were they were making it seem almost effortless at times just because they were literally blowing through blocks and then making big key moment plays and at the end of the day like what I talked about over on Saturday you got to you got to stay in your game plan, you got to stay on your blocks and you got to you got to stick with this but I mean as you saw the outcome of it you can kind of tell what happened. They just they just kind of crumbled in my honest opinion, just because literally it was, like I said, it was a shock to me. I literally, I didn't get a chance to watch much of it, but from what the brief highlights that I did get to, like I did get to see, I was really, really, I was rooting for Oregon state. Like we've talked a lot about Utah. I mean, Utah was definitely the team that we've talked about a lot. Like we said, without Cam rising, but I mean, at the end of the day, their defense just completely came out of the woodwork and like you said they're underrated and with that kind of a defense they definitely need to be talked about more but obviously you know how the media and everything goes i mean ask father blake how the media goes and he'll go off on you for a little bit about it but i mean it really it really blew my mind a little bit just watching the highlights in the game for what i did get a chance to watch a little bit yeah and and honestly i think another aspect of it too was that you know with uh, you know Bryce Bar- or, uh, Barnes. He he was just wasn't really working. You know, it, it's it's not it's not there. And again, they took too long. Uh, you know to swap that out. But mm-hmm. ultimately, Blake. I mean, without Cam Rising, does this Utah team even really stand much of a chance to to really make it much further if Cam Rising doesn't come back? No, uh, I, I don't believe they do. And I'm not sure he even comes back. Like if they lose another game or two, I know that they still got Oregon. Uh, they uh, do they play USC? Uh, do they play Washington? Uh, I'm sure they play one of them. Uh, but if you lose one or two more, I mean, what's the point of him even coming back? Honestly, so uh, I don't think they do, and it's their inability to run the football right now that they, they can't run the ball. Uh, their defense can only hold for so long, man, because they're just constantly going three and out, three and out. Uh, and and the rotation of quarterbacks is just a mess right now. So uh, I'm shocked at this Utah team. But Oregon State, man, uh, I was shocked that they were able to run the ball on Utah. Uh, and, and DJ, you made big-time throws uh, down the field. Oregon State's receivers made big-time plays. Uh, and, and that's what it takes to beat a defense of that caliber. So – uh, good for DJU, man. I know they lost last week to Washington State, uh, and then they bounce back and get this big time dub. Uh, they're a good football team up there. So uh, the the fans in Corvallis, uh, they got to be excited of where that program's headed, and uh, and it, it was a big time win for them. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and and yeah, it, it, like I said, it's just it was shocking to see how good that defense stood up because we knew that they were going to be better. Uh, than, than years past this uh, this upcoming season. We knew that – I think we talked about them when we talked about the Pac-12, but uh, the fact that they were able to, to come back and, and and fight back, like you said, losing to Washington State, taking a blow there, and, and beating the reigning Pac-12 champ, the two-time reigning Pac-12 champ. Uh, very good very good fight there. But let's go over to, uh, to Kentucky. I, I think that – man, I told you guys right away, as soon as I saw what was happening in the first half, we were wrong on this one. Uh, and I'm, I'm willing to admit, but but the thing is, and this is something I said uh, on the show on Saturday, is you know if you listen to to our projection of the game and and what needs to happen in the game, that's why I like that we switched it up talking about you know, what each team needs to do to win the game because we're right uh, on on that, and and I think when it shows because whenever they're they're struggling in the aspects that we we say they need to do better on, that's when you see uh, you know that's. We, we, what we're saying in our in our projection uh, is is usually overall pretty accurate, but 
our picks aren't always accurate. We we both, we all kind of agreed. We thought Florida was the team to beat in this one. We thought Florida was able to come out and, and surprise everybody and finally get that road win under Billy Napier and turn things around. And I don't know why we thought that, um, but that wasn't the case. Kentucky came out and they ran the ball down their throat. Uh, I want to give Kentucky huge props for what they did. I know Mark Stoops, like we mentioned, Mark Stoops is going to be known for getting these big, tough dudes that are able to come in there and just they're, – they're, they're going to be tougher than you. And, and they're going to be able to play that SEC smash mouth football. Uh, but the way that Kentucky did this was absolutely insane. Uh, just looking over, uh, you know, uh, looking over at Johnson. Uh, so, uh, no, that's not who I'm thinking of. Uh, sorry, Davis. I was looking at the wrong side of, of the stat line here. So, so for Kentucky, he had 26 carries. He had 280 yards and three touchdowns. Uh, the, the dude Ooh. was just absolutely insane. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's really tough to do overall and then just looking at this team overall what they were able to do they put up over 300 uh, 300 uh, you know i think it was 380 yards 330 yards uh i think it was 330 yards on on the ground alone so just looking at what kentucky did on the ground being able to just kill florida uh they they demolished them and and every asset of, of the game there and then they just they did not let florida they, they didn't let them run the ball like we mentioned with them um, but if, if I were to tell you guys last Saturday when we were recapping this game and I was looking through uh, and, and I said, hey, guys, let's look at these two quarterbacks, OK, because Graham Mertz is going to throw 25 of, for 30, 244 yards, two touchdowns, only one interception. And Devin Leary is only going to go nine for 19, 69 yards and one touchdown. We would have said, oh, I'm picking Florida by 50 because if Graham Mertz is doing that good through the air, they must be doing pretty good on the ground, right? <laughs> I mean, just looking at the, the stat line there just from the quarterbacks, that tells you a lot. It was absolutely crazy uh, to see how well Kentucky did. And like I said, just playing smash mouth football. Uh, and, and Blake, like I said, just a huge, huge game on the ground. Yeah, Kentucky didn't have to throw it. Uh, and that's one of the things that really shocked me was uh, Florida's D-line in front seven just got abused, man. Uh, they they were just getting pushed smooth off the ball. They weren't tackling in space. Um, it's been a minute since I've seen a Florida defense uh, like that, and that is what shocked me. Uh, Kentucky's ability to get pressure uh, on Graham Ertz. I, I know uh, he made a couple bad decisions, and uh, Kentucky come away with a pick there. That was a bad ball he threw. I felt like it should have been caught, but – um, it got tipped up. Kentucky got the pick, and it was just all downhill from there, man. There was uh, nothing fluid on the Florida offense. They couldn't run the football. Uh, it, it was just a bad day at the office. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and like I said, just just the fact that the, the stat lines, when you look at them, just how lopsided they are, and, and you know, from passing to rushing and rushing to passing, uh, you know, just looking at it on both sides of the ball, Jeremy, I, I, like, like I said, Kentucky, we didn't have – questions about how tough Kentucky was but we thought this game would be closer and we thought Florida would be finally able to have themselves a road win wasn't the case on, on Saturday absolutely not I mean looking at it we were completely wrong with this kind of out, outcome um, literally their running game absolutely blew my mind just because I was thinking that it was going to be at least 60 40 for running to pass ratio or 70 to 30 but i mean it just seemed like they were just straight dominant on their run game like you mentioned with that kind of a stats so that's just have a day like literally you can't have any better of a of a game to go into the, go into their stadium and perform at that caliber i mean if you're going to be doing numbers like that you definitely are a team to be circling on their schedule if you're going to be playing these guys. I'm sorry, but I mean, I was definitely, I was definitely bamboozled to say the least for seeing the overall stats. Like I, I literally had to do a double take and look at the stats because I thought I was reading it wrong. But like I said, we our picks are pretty, our 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 picks are pretty wrong for this week to say the yeah. least. Well, no, no, and, and like I said, I think you know we're going to have wrong picks. But our analysis of the game was totally accurate, and that's yeah. what I'm. I'll give us. I'll give us a, a, a round of applause for our analysis is always spot on. I don't think we've ever said something that was just like, "What are you talking about?" Florida. Florida does fine running the ball. They don't need to. They, they don't. No, we we said Florida needs to get the ground game running. 
Uh, and if they don't, they're going to lose this game. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be able to stay in it. Uh, and we, we, we talked about a lot of things, uh, you know, especially even in this game, that I, I think our analysis was spot on. Um, but, man, let's let's jump over to yeah. the Auburn Tigers. Talk about Blake's team here, man. I, I was extremely proud of your Auburn Tigers. And I know you already said a little bit about these guys so far. Uh, very proud of them, looking at how they fought throughout this game. I texted you just before halftime mm-hmm. let you know, man, I – I, I'm, I forgot to put it on record. I had them cover, and they were in my parlay. Uh, and I'll get back to that parlay here in a little bit because I had a 12 lake parlay. was looking fantastic on Saturday. Uh, it was supposed to win me some good money on a free free $10 bet over on FanDuel. But uh, just looking at, looking at those Auburn Tigers, the way that they played, they put their hearts out on the field. And I don't think Georgia – is a bad team. And I think a lot of people are, are acting as if this team just has things to figure out. They, they do this. All right. They, they've done this with the best teams that they've had. They, they did this to Missouri. I think it was either last year or the year before. Uh, and then again, to, again against Kent state. Uh, so we, we've seen them have their, their moments where they just, they, they just have to play good ball and figure things out and win the game. So I think f- starting off with Georgia, uh, you know, I, I know I, I'm talking up Auburn, but Georgia still played a, a solid game, able to come back, keep their guys calm and collective. And you're going into Jordan Hare stadium. This isn't going to be a walk in the park. Uh, but, you know, Blake, I agree with you. I would have loved to see Auburn come out because, like I said, I had them covering. I don't care if they they, they if they if win. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm rooting for them to win. But even if they lose, don't lose by that 14 and a half. I think I was looking at that, and, and it was more or less me listening to Josh Pate. So, so hats off to Josh Pate. He made a lot of sense with what he said, too. And I think when you've got an offense that's struggling and an offensive-minded coach, you're going to figure out ways to fix what's wrong with your team. And, and I looked at that, and I also think uh, just looking at how history repeats itself, coming off of a bad game against Texas A&M, your offense looked like garbage. Uh, you, that's not going to happen two times in a row with a coach like Hugh Freeze. And I think this weekend, even though you only cover and you don't, we don't get to put uh, Auburn shocks the world, Auburn upsets number one Georgia, even though we don't get to put that, guess what? guess what the biggest win out of this weekend is? All those recruits that were coming to this game, you get to go over and say you are the yeah. you will be the difference maker next year. You have a yeah. place on this team that you could make us that much better. That that what, what, it was a seven point game, right? Yeah. Yep. yeah. So yep. you you are the difference of that seven points, and that's where man, I'm, I'm ecstatic for your Auburn Tigers. Uh, and and Blake, I I was very happy with how they they, they performed. Uh, I think that's what you need to see out of them. Uh, and, and we'll get to another team that didn't perform that well against the top uh, top dog like that. But just looking at your Auburn Tigers, that's how you want to see them perform against the, the top dogs in, in the nation. Yeah, Josh, and, and it, I mean, it hurts to lose like that, right? Um, I felt like we were in control of the game. Um, I, you know, I, I, I point back to right before half, we were in Georgia's territory. We were inside the red zone, and – we decided to go for it on a fourth and one and we didn't pick it up. It was a high snap and I didn't really agree with that decision from Hugh freeze. Uh, I feel like if you kick the field goal there, you take the lead into half, go in 13 to 10. I feel like there's a lot of momentum there at home with the Jordan hair crowd around you. And, you know, it, it didn't work out. Um, you know, we got the turnover in the second half and, and, uh, we, you know, we ended up scoring and going up 17 to 10. I feel like that would have been a huge momentum boost. If you would have kicked that field goal there, I understood why he went for it because touchdowns beat Georgia, not field goals. Uh, but I just feel like against their front compared to our front, uh, I'm not sure, you know, I just questioned that call, but, that, you know, that's how it goes, man. If, if we would have went for it and got it and would have scored, uh, it would have been the other way around, right? So uh, the ability to actually hang in this game when everybody was counting you out, people were saying that you were going to get drilled, uh, and you showed the country that Q Freeze does have a plan. He has, uh, you know, a plan with recruiting, and the recruiting is off the charts right now. And there was over 200 recruits in the building. And they were all watching it. And like you said, they can be the difference next year. Now, Brock Bowers did go off in the fourth quarter. And I know there's a lot of Auburn fans that are mad that he was getting open. 
But let's be honest, man. A, a guy of that caliber is just going to – he's eventually going to find his spots, man. The dude made two one-handed grabs that wouldn't have been caught by anybody else in the country besides maybe a Marvin Harrison and a couple other guys. I mean – He's just unreal, you know. He's going to come in. He's a guy that's going to come into the NFL next year, and you are going to draft him within the first three rounds of your fantasy draft. Like, yeah. That's how good Brock Powers is, okay? And if a guy like Brock – if it takes a guy like Brock Bowers to beat us and we're a bunch of two stars and three stars on that side, I can live with that because it's year one under Hugh. I can live with that. Um but I think on the Georgia side of things, man, you saw Carson Beck grow up Saturday. And what a lot of people around America may not be seeing about this Georgia team is that was his first road test in a hostile environment. All right. He was amongst 90,000 fans and one of the most bitter rivalries in the country. Like that rivalry is no joke to Auburn fans. And Georgia fans, you gotta you gotta really break down and look where Auburn sits on the map, man. Uh, it is right on the Georgia state line, so that that game means something to a lot of people. Yeah. And for Auburn to give that performance, I thought it was a plus, even though we lost, and, and it stings because that's seven in a row losing to Georgia. But I feel like that streak is about to get snapped here shortly. Uh, just by seeing that performance on the field Saturday and the recruits and the commits that are coming in to this uh, to this program, uh, it, it's got me excited. It's got me excited, Josh. And, and yeah. uh, I got to tip my cap to my guys. Uh, I'm damn proud of them and the way they played, man. I wish they could have won it. Uh, and it stung. Like, I'll be honest with you, after the game, uh, I, sat, I sat in my room and, and I didn't watch many – I didn't watch many games like for about an hour and I just sat there, you know, and, and because that game means something to me, man, it's the yeah. deep South's oldest robbery. Yeah. And, uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I just I, sat I told, there. I told my boss this week, I said, yo, just, so you know, I may not be in on, uh, to work on Monday, regardless of how that game goes. I might just be partying it up so hard that I don't want to come in. And I may just be so <laughs> depressed that like, man, I don't want to go into work on Monday. I, I'm just going to tell you straight yeah. right now. Uh, I get it. They're, those kind of rivalries, especially when they mean that much. And this year was big. Uh, I think I think you and I are such in a, a sim- similar spot right now with our teams because I'm just a year ahead of you is all. Uh, you know, I've, I've got I've got my guy in his mm-hmm. second year. I finally got to see how his recruiting played out for a full season of recruiting. And, and you know, that was a, a plus side. I got to see how he operated in the transfer portal uh, with a full season of that. And so I feel like you're just you're just a year behind me. You're mm-hmm. just the season behind me. And I, I, I see good things coming from Hugh Freeze. Um, and, and I'll, I'll touch more on that in just a second too. But, uh, I mean, Jeremy, like Blake mentioned, Brock Bowers is Georgia, uh, Brock Bowers. I mean, without that dude, I don't know. I don't, I don't think Georgia pulled it off, uh, without Brock Bowers. And then also to, to your, your point on Carson Beck too. Uh, and I don't know if you guys are watching this, but Kenneth Walker, you got to go to the gym and tighten your, your butt up. You, you need to like literally tighten it up. <laughs> Because if, if you didn't have such a loose butt, your butt doesn't hit the ground right there, and you don't go down. That was a touchdown. His his butt just barely skimmed the ground. Um, but and and I needed that for my parlay. Um, but <laughs> but anyways, going back to this, I, for, first off, I think Carson Beck did grow up a lot. I think he showed a lot where Georgia fans were down on him even after even after Saturday. They're still down on him. That dude looked very good. He looked like he showed a lot of improvement. He showed like he is learning week to week. Uh, and, and I think Carson Beck looked good. But like I said, without Brock Bowers, I don't think Georgia comes back in that game. Um, but, Jeremy, what's your analysis on that one? You took the worst right out of my mouth. Brock Bowers is Georgia. And um, it would, literally, without Brock Bowers, if he were to get hurt, I'm, obviously I never want to wish that upon anybody. But, like, if he were to get hurt, it would have been a whole different situation. I mean, I put a little – five dollar bet for Auburn for the money line just because I really really want to see Auburn pull off this thing just because looking at it when it was 20 to 20 I'm like come on Auburn please don't let me down here like I, I'm not feeling like Blake here but I literally was like I was so ecstatic for Auburn because like they were hanging in this I, I I agree with Blake on the same I didn't like that fourth and one play but I mean it what happened happened and it doesn't help like you said with a high snap and 
obviously Georgia's defense, they're quick to pounce on something like that. But the overall aspect of the game, even just Blake's talked about this plenty of times. So you go down into Jordan or Hare, and that place, I I want to experience it someday. That place literally looks like the most electrifying place to play college football at. Like you really look at the atmosphere, the fans, it like I'm not trying to say anything against Nebraska, but like Auburn fans, they know when to show up is the big thing. Like literally it watching that game, I didn't get to, get a chance to watch a lot of it, but from the quick time that I did get to watch it, Auburn was definitely putting Georgia in for a run for their money to say the least. But obviously like it, the big thing that I, from what I did get a chance to see and watch when they get on their outside and they needed to cover a little bit better towards the sideline. But I mean, you can only do so much when you get into running plays, like when they get out that far on the hash marks, but for the overall outcome, the the game was still really really good for Auburn and I don't know if it's just because Cam Newton was there and I I don't know but I mean um, still Auburn showed up and that was a really really fun game to watch and it just goes to show you it's a stepping stone and Auburn's definitely going up the right steps and I'm I'm on the same boat with Blake I definitely give Auburn an A plus for that game like you said they didn't come out with the outcome with it but I mean still it was an overall really really fun game to watch and Auburn's definitely got a lot to they'll be they'll be they'll be definitely coming up to a lot of people and they'll be surprising a lot of people here in the next couple of weeks I think. Yeah, yeah, I think I think maybe more like an A minus because an A plus would have meant that you you pulled off the upset, um, but, but I I don't think you could have done too much better in that game against that kind of a caliber of team. But we're talking about a lot of things that are are really good transition mm-hmm. over to the next game because we're talking about a fourth and one play that didn't go the, the right way, probably wasn't the right call. Uh, Nebraska had a very similar situation against Michigan. Uh, we're also talking about a few, first year head coach that you know who is is looking better and better every week. Whereas over in Nebraska, I'm questioning the, the, the first year head coach every week, uh, and and I want to be high on Matt Rule, but you know we're, we, you just brought up uh, Nebraska's fan base too, and and you know what Nebraska does have one of one of if not the best fan bases in college football. Personally, I think they are the best fan base currently, but you're going to start seeing that this this Nebraska fan base drop off. Uh, I'm, I'm surrounded, Jeremy. You and I are both surrounded by Nebraska uh, Cornhusker fans. And the more that you see out of this team, the more doubt that goes into this team, the more decisions that are made, more doubt goes into the head coach that is here. And the more you keep on going on this train, the harder it is to get Nebraska back. And I I just, I am, I'm starting to lose faith in Matt Rule. Uh, I think there was a lot of coaching decisions that I didn't like from him. And not only that, but like I said, Blake, uh, with, with your Auburn Tigers, I think you have to you 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 ex, you have to expect your team to play against the top talent, like Auburn did, and you know I was I was arguing with my brother because he was saying you can't judge Nebraska based on how they've just played against the number two team. No, that's exactly when you judge them. How do you play against the toughest environment, the toughest opponents? And that was exactly what we saw with Nebraska. They played terribly. They loved forty plus points. Uh, so on, on the side of the ball that we had the most the most hope for, they played terrible. Uh, there was times when gaps were just left completely open. Uh, there's there's obviously a strong side, and nobody is covering up the strong side on a fourth and one where you could have gotten huge momentum. Uh, Nebraska just played terribly, but on top of that, I think Michigan showed up and they showed that they're not they're not going to get into this this slow moving start. They're they're going to keep on winning. And yeah, they have an easy schedule. You can you can throw all the hate out that Michigan hasn't played anybody all you want. And you know what? I totally agree with you, but they have beat everybody by 20 plus points now and they keep on rolling with it. Nebraska, uh, Michigan is looking good. I think they still deserve to be the top of the Big 10 right now. They're right up there with Ohio State and Penn State. I think all three of them tied right now. Uh, I can't really put one above the other because I know I think Penn State and and Ohio State have a better resume, but Michigan is still the reigning champ, the two-time reigning champ. And you know what? Ohio State's going to have to come to Ann Arbor to play up in the big house. Uh, So right now I think Michigan looked almost flawless against a Nebraska team that is, yes, struggling, but I do think their defense has talent, uh, and I think they're big and talented. Uh, But they just they fell apart on Saturday. Uh, And and Jeremy, you and I were – surrounded by Husker Nation right now, and you can tell there's just a deflation. I think that that, that sellout streak is, is kind of – it's it's starting to get in danger the more they, they lose, and especially when they lose like this. 
Yeah, um, that was not fun to watch. I'm sorry, but um, it felt like Nebraska wasn't even – putting up a fight when I was watching the game. I'll give credit to the Michigan kid for the behind the back catch. That was an unbelievable catch. I don't remember his Lost name, but completely. my hat's off to him. Yeah, that was that that blew my mind watching that catch. But I mean, going outside of that great catch from Michigan, looking at the overall outcome for Nebraska, literally you're gonna definitely see a dramatic number of Nebraska fans starting to drop off or just go back like a bear in hibernation and not come out. I mean, literally, it. what do you have to do? I know a lot of people were saying, get Jeff Sims out. Okay, now he's out. What are you going to do? Then um, I really don't know what else I can really say about Nebraska just because they just need to find that – they just need to find that mojo in them, get that fire lit in their gut, and just play – old school Nebraska football. I mean, like you said, I know this is the number two team in the country, but I mean, at moments like these, you're definitely going to find the the overall spots that definitely need to be worked on and spots that, okay, we can, we can hang on here, but we need to just make simple little adjustments here. But looking at this Nebraska team, it's definitely – it's definitely hard to watch to say the least. Well, and, and like I mentioned on Saturday, I think the Nebraska atmosphere, like you said, their mojo relies on, on Husker nation to be there. The, the, the red mm-hmm. kingdom, you know, that show up for your team. And if you look at those stands by halftime, it was empty. I have never, ever in my lifetime empty. seen that place empty, that empty other than when an event is not going on. This is, this is a stadium that sold out, and then had to add more seats down on the on the ground level for a volleyball game, and it was empty. I, I get it; your team's getting whomped at halftime, but you still have to show your your love and your support for your team a little better than that. Uh, I get some empty seats, but uh, and mm-hmm. and also shout out to my my cousin's girlfriend. He he brought he brought him over uh, or him he brought her over <laughs> to for the first time meeting our family, our side of the family. And it was during that game. And so my dad and my brother are going at it and just yelling. And, uh, you know, if she sticks around after that, I'd be surprised. But, uh, no, I just – Blake, Michigan looked good. I'm I'm not going to say that Nebraska looked bad, uh, you know, the whole way. I think Michigan looked good. I think they played uh, played how they should have, and and they they looked as good as they should have looked. Fellas, I'll be honest with you. The last thing on my list on a Saturday is to watch a Nebraska game. (laughs) Uh, I know you guys, I know you guys are in Cornhusker Nation, but uh, I'll be honest with you. Look, they just don't have the talent right now, fellas. They don't have the talent. Uh, they, in my opinion, they're in a way deeper hole than what Auburn is in. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and it's yeah. it's gonna take 100%. it's gonna take time. It's gonna take time, but let me tell you something. And 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 I, if you're a Nebraska fan listening to this, I am sorry. But I said earlier in the year that you were making a mistake by not getting out of the Big Ten because now Oregon is coming in, USC, UCLA, uh, Washington, and all these cats. uh, And I just think you're going to fall further down the totem pole uh, with with these guys coming in. and I just think it's going to be an even harder process uh, to get back to what you used to be, right? So, um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's not good for uh, it's not good for the the Nebraska faithful right now. And and I didn't really watch a whole lot of it. Uh, so, um, man, fellas, hold, hold on one second. I gotta hold on. I gotta take care of something. You're all good, man. Uh, no, I, I honestly, too. I mean, like I said, I think the more, the more that we see from this team, and the more, uh, the, the more that we see from Matt Rule, I'm, I'm just, I'm losing faith. I haven't lost faith, and I don't think Nebraska should lose faith in him. But it's, I understand why it's getting to that point, uh, just because you, 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 you take too long to make the decision to, to take Sims out. And they're, they're really just saying that he's he's out because of an injury, not because they chose to take him out. So I'm still kind of questioning that. Um, but then, you know, we, we look at how you're performing against the top 
the the top performance, you know, the top uh, the top team on your schedule. The only team that we that Nebraska should have really been concerned, saying, "Yeah, that's a for sure loss," is Michigan. Michigan was the only team on that schedule that you look at and say, "Yeah, we weren't gonna we weren't gonna win that one." But you have to play competitive, uh, and and it sucks to be a, a, a Husker right now. I, I get it. That's my second team to root for, so I don't I don't want to sit here and 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 dog on them or anything. But Nebraska sucks right now, and, and it sucks to be uh, in, in that boat. Uh, so, but guys, let's let's move on because. It's horns down week, which means I am not going to say a single good thing about Texas. But Texas came out and won against Kansas. I, you can take that as a good thing, but it's just a fact. Uh, Texas won against Kansas. But the only reason why they won is because Jalen Daniels didn't play. I didn't know that he wasn't going to play until game time. They, they made that decision and didn't have him play. So if Jalen Daniels, uh, you know, okay, um, they probably still would have won with Jalen Daniels in there. But Kansas covers the spread. We made the right pick. Kansas covers the spread if Jalen Daniels is in. Good job, Texas. You, you beat a Kansas team that's struggling without Jalen Daniels. Whoopie do. Uh, you know, that's, that's all I got to say. But Jeremy... Texas sucks. So, what do you have to say about it? <laughs> Man, you're just you're really showing your true boomer sooner side right now. That's kind of Horns funny. Down week, baby. But I mean, there ain't um, no good good love going exactly, over. Exactly. Let's go. The south There's side no good it. love to say the least. Heck no. But I mean, Texas, they definitely, um, they definitely, they got lucky. I I don't like saying that, but I mean they definitely did get lucky for this kind of a situation. I mean, looking at the overall outcome of the game, I mean it was Texas being Texas to say the least, and not in a good way. But I mean they definitely got their work cut out. But, but I mean going up into this week and Josh's uh, Josh's antics, I know are going to keep getting more and more each day up till e- up till the day of horns down. And it's definitely going to be a day for where we're going to finally see the true overall aspect of Texas and this rivalry between Oklahoma and Texas. Now it like Josh said before at the beginning of the show, this is already a, a legendary rivalry. And um, I got, I gotta be honest with you. I've, I've been a. I like Texas. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't want to say it on the air just because I know Josh knows where I live, and he's probably going to hunt me down, and he's probably going to make me cry. But well, um, I've about always been a Boomer Jeremy Sooner fan. The last episode and... Jeremy was ever a part of uh, Rising to the Occasion, but uh, anyways, it was. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it's nice knowing you guys. I love and appreciate everybody. But um, yeah, Boomer Sooner <laughs> is definitely going to shine this upcoming week, to say the least. Yeah, we got we got big things. If I have things. to say that, so I don't get fired. <laughs> we got big things planned too. Make sure you tune in on Saturday, guys. Uh, you're not going to want to miss it. Uh, I'm I'm already thinking forward to the, to this Saturday, and, and, and that's going to be. I, I hope you guys are cool with it. That's going to be the game of the week. Uh, I'm I'm pumped for it. Like I said, this is the biggest. Uh, you know, I I can't remember a time that I was this pumped up for Red River rivalry because this is the last year of the Big Twelve. Uh, for for both these teams, and they're the only two teams ranked in the AP top twenty five in the Big Twelve right now, uh, and mm-hmm. and so I mean it's it's an amazing story lining itself up right now. I just I, I need this game to be close, regardless, uh, unless Oklahoma is going to kill uh, Texas fifty to zero, so we can rub that in their face instead of them hanging that forty nine zero on us. Um, but Blake, Texas sucks, and they 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 wouldn't have covered that spread if Jalen Daniels was in the game, right? Yeah, I agree. Uh, I think Jalen Daniels would have clearly kept it a little closer uh, than what it ended up. But this Texas team is for real, fellas. Uh, And this is going to be a battle Saturday. I I truly believe that. Um, I'm excited for it. Uh, Texas is on offense, man. They're they're firing on all cylinders, running the football, throwing the football. Quinn Ewers having a heck of a year. Uh, Those receivers on the on the outside are lethal. Uh, but I, I'm interested in to see this Oklahoma defense uh, against this Texas offense. I'm excited for that. Uh, so I think this is going to be a battle, and I can't wait to talk about it, fellas. But uh, I, I'm sorry that I, I just had something come up, man, uh, and I got to run. I, I hate to leave you guys. Uh, no, you don't gotta but I gotta go. you got to apologize. I got to go. You got life that comes blood. up. But, man, we appreciate you, you, you sticking around with us this long. But uh, we'll, we'll catch you on the next one, bro. All right, fellas. No, but uh, you know, Jeremy, looking at, at at that that rivalry upcoming this weekend, I, should I should I record 
uh, should I record like the entire game like on me watching? I'm gonna I'm gonna be over at my parents' house watching with them. Should I do that and edit together like the whole game just clips? Because I, I you know it's gonna be crazy in the entire household. Like a, you know my 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 mom my dad uh, Dylan's gonna be over so we're gonna have more family on top of that. I, I'm kind of feeling like this is this is this might be the game to to I would do a watch party, but uh, it's it's probably going to be a little too tense for a, for a watch party it may not be pg-13 um in some ways no. but i uh, mean it's it's going to be fun i i'm, I'm excited for the the, the rivalry up this coming week um but let, let's jump over to lsu because like i said i had a 12 leg parlay uh it was looking really good i think i made the right picks everywhere uh and you know like i said i, I think i had uh what was the game that i mentioned earlier it was it was uh um um, I, men- I mentioned a game that, that I had on there and and it, and, and it covered too, but uh, or it, it was it was a good one. But anyways, it was uh, you know you're looking over at uh, LSU. They were on that parlay, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna throw throw LSU in there. I'm feeling confident on them. Ole Miss isn't very good this year. They didn't look good against Alabama. LSU is gonna start piecing things together and become better. But I'm never gonna trust LSU again. Never. Not not once in the rest of my life. I will never put money for you ever again. I will put money against you from now on just because I don't care if I lose my money on against you. Uh, because I had a 12-leg parlay. It was supposed to be a free bet. So I got a free $10 bet that, that DraftKings was offering. Uh, go over to rising2.com slash bet, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com slash bet and see if FanDuel is available in your area because that's one of my favorite sports books right now. Um, but... I had a free $10 bet that was going to turn into 680 bucks, and LSU blew it. They were the last team I needed to, to win. I had Alabama covering, um, but other than that, I just needed LSU to win, and, and they blew it for me. I hate LSU. Uh, I hope they lose every game for the rest of the season. My goodness, what was wrong with you? Why? I don't know, but looking at this, just no defense. Where is that big, tough SEC LSU defense that we expect out of LSU? That's what I look at, and man, it was it was pitiful. Uh, they lost to Ole Miss, really on on kind of a, a last last minute drive from Ole Miss. Hats off to to Ole Miss because, like I said, I wasn't I wasn't high on Ole Miss. I didn't think Ole Miss looked good, and they they turned things around. They turned things around in that game uh, to come out this week and and to beat LSU, looking much better. And, and I'm, I'm proud of Ole Miss for what they were able to do. They were trying to get Jebkins to to get rolling. They, they got him rolling a little bit in this game. Uh, and, and overall, I think Ole Miss put something together, at least on the offensive side of the ball. But both teams, you're in the SEC. you got to play more defense than this, Jeremy. LSU, you made me cry this weekend <laughs> because I did the same thing. I put a parlay in for LSU, and you made me crap the bed. LSU, come on. What are you doing? Um but no, going talking about L- I mean, talk, excuse me, talking about Ole Miss. I mean, like you mentioned, going against Alabama, like they started off okay, but once Alabama got rolling, then we saw old school Alabama and just perform like they usually do. Now going into this week with old LSU and Ole Miss, um, I'm sorry, that was the most atrocious performance I've seen so far this season. Fact, period, and. It, it really baffles me just because we talked about LSU and how strongly defensive that they are. Those guys down in the south in the bayou, they're built different. But what I saw this weekend, they looked like they were playing patty cake, for crying out loud. I was literally so dumbfounded just because you go to one week and LSU will completely make you look as flat as a piece of paper. Then the next week, they completely mow by you like you're not even – like you're not even moving. And Josh, both you and I obviously put football then. Literally, we know what it takes to perform at a certain level, but you're in the SEC, the greatest conference in all of college football here. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I mean, this overall outcome for an LSU team, I, literally coming from so many high level talent players coming from LSU in the past, and now you see this kind of a thing. What are LSU fans really thinking? Are they really thinking we can be dominant one week and we can be complete 
trash the following week? Or are you going to see a lot of LSU fans starting to become like Nebraska a little bit and just all of a sudden just start to jump off the bandwagon a little bit? I want your opinion on that, Josh. Yeah, I, no, I, I think LSU is fine. I think they're in a good position overall. But like like we both said, I, I just think this was a terrible – it was a terrible showing for both of them. <clears throat> Man, now you're giving me the cough. Um, but you know, I, just, <laughs> I, I think, I think it was it, like I said, it was just the, just the defense that really disappointed me. You're not able to come away with this if you play a little bit of defense, you win this game. Um, but yeah, LSU loses to Ole Miss in, in a shootout, which is not SEC play. You don't you don't win in shootouts unless you're Tennessee, Alabama. That's allowed. Uh, not not no, LSU, not. Ole Miss. That's not allowed. Um, but let, let's jump over to the last game we're going to cover for, for college football, and that is Notre Dame against Duke. Like I meant, like we were talking about on Saturday, this was one of the games we brought up because this is a big-time matchup. Yeah, Notre Dame, fighting Irish, going against Duke and going at Duke. I, I mean, like I brought up, this is not your normal Notre Dame versus Duke. This isn't your normal Duke team, and it showed uh, – First and foremost, prayers out to Riley Leonard. Uh, I hope everything's good. It sounds like it was a high ankle sprain. Uh, so I, I, I really do hope that he's okay because the dude is a baller. Uh, the dude makes the game different for Duke. Uh, and so I'm, I'm really hoping that he's okay. But the, the Duke looked really good. I'll start off with the losers. Duke looked really good the whole game through. They led uh, right there towards the end. You know, they, they were leading the game and they had a chance. I think if they keep Riley Leonard in, they still – had that chance to, to win, but once he comes out, that's a game changer that hurts your offense. You're not able to do anything there. Uh, and, and, and hats off to Sam Hartman for sticking around to make sure Riley Leonard was, was good too. Uh, that, that's a class act right there. And I love to see that. I love to see the sportsmanship mm-hmm. like that. We, we love the drama. We love seeing some of the, the fun banter back and forth, but I love even more seeing the sportsmanship. Uh, every time I get, I get like a little, uh, a little bit in my, my chest when I see stuff like that, uh, or, Whenever you see see guys help a player up from the opposing team, you don't see that very often. So I, I love it when I see good sportsmanship. Uh, it, it is supposed to be a, 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 a game of full of rivalries, but outside of playing, you, you still got to have that good sportsmanship. But ultimately, Notre Dame coming back, uh, you know, and, and, and being able to, to keep their composure. So they, they were up for a while. Uh, Duke comes back, and they're getting punched in the mouth. I, I don't know, you know. What do you do at that that moment? A lot of teams give up. A lot of teams give in to that pressure. But Duke, or, uh, sorry, Notre Dame fought back. They said we're not losing this game. Uh, Estime he runs for a thirty yard touchdown and beats Duke there in the last uh, the last minute uh, and and a huge run and a, at a huge moment. There's a piece of my parlay right there. I need a DK Metcalf to catch that touchdown. Um, but anyways, uh, Monday night football is going on right now. For those who are who are watching on Tuesday, we we record on Mondays and release on Tuesdays. But uh, and, and guys, right now, if, if you bet the over like me, uh, you are wrong so far because this is only a seven point game right now, seven to zero. Uh, really good defensive showing so far. But anyways, back to Notre Dame, Duke. Duke, you are still in this. Duke, you are still good. Uh, hopefully Riley Leonard being out doesn't hurt this Duke team because I think they've got so much uh, to look forward to this season, and they are a very tough team. Uh, but, Jeremy, Duke, no longer a basketball team after losing Coach K. This is a football team, bro. Coach K was probably watching that game. He thought, man, they really – they must have heard me and say, we're only a basketball school. We're going to perform this year. No, I'm just kidding. But – um. Duke definitely balled out, no pun intended. Um, they were literally putting a lot of Notre Dame fans on the edges of their seat, to say the least. Literally, Duke, my hats are off to you. You put up a performance like that against Notre Dame. I mean, it's one it's one thing to go against a team to where, okay, we're going to completely come into this game and we're going to roll over them. But Notre Dame's no team to sleep on, obviously. I mean, you look at Sam Hartman from what he's done this year. He's put up unbelievable numbers. And um, like you also said, my thoughts and prayers go out to him for Josh Leonard and a speedy recovery. No one ever likes to see an injury like that, especially to a great player and a person. Then also, like you said, I'm going to, I'm going to say that again. My my um, my thoughts for, for Sam Hartman sticking around by the medical tent, that truly does show unbelievable sportsmanship, and that will go a long way, and that truly shows what outside of the – 
outside of the gridiron and what we all suit up for and trying to get a W out at the end of the day, we're all brothers here. We're all just fam- we're all one big happy family. We may well, love and hate each other on the field, but I, I think that that speaks volumes to NFL scouts too, uh, and, and they like to see that. 100%. They like to see the the leadership that he's shown, and then the good sportsmanship like that too. Uh, but yeah, even outside of, I think, I think Duke is a good football team. I think they still stick around in the ACC and, uh, I, I just, I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't really know. I don't even remember their backups name. Um, but, uh, I, I hope that he's good enough to keep them around because it's going to suck if they end up having a bad season because they lose the keep, you know, the key position, uh, and, and their key player yeah. on offense, but that defense is still good enough that I think they got a good chance. Uh, so, so yeah, Absolutely. hats off to Duke for a big time game. You you just beat Clemson in week one, and now you turn around and do this to a a, a Notre Dame team that was pissed off and, and wanted revenge to come out, and, and they just lost a game that was taken from them. So just hats off mm-hmm. to you because you stuck around and, and fought against a very tough Notre Dame team. Uh, and then on on top of that too, uh, we weren't too far far off on this pick. We we ended up going. We wanted to pick Notre Dame uh, money line. We were two two on one there. But then I thought, you know, let's let's make this even for all of us because we all thought this would be a close game. They didn't cover that five and a half, but they only lost by seven. Uh, still still a very good game by Duke. But let's go ahead and jump over to the NFL. But before we do, Jeremy, uh, who's our sponsor for this episode today? Our sponsor is actually a shirt that I'm wearing, and it is one of my favorite shirts. I wear this out, and that is Mahler Bros. Mahler Bros, we all want to look good on the golf course. I know me and Josh, we do a lot of golfing, and shout out to Hidden Acres just because we always love to go to that course. But often, it comes at an expense of feeling good. Like mm-hmm. you, can, you and I obviously can talk about Josh. We've gone to Shields playing times to go get golf balls. I'm not trying to say that about our golf game, but um, we look at golf polos and we also look at golf apparel. Then um, we look at these and like, okay, this is a decent thing. But um, the one thing that always gets everybody is the price tag. Literally, Mahler Bros polos that look so good and they're unbelievably feeling good. Ever since you first introduced me to Mahler Bros, obviously, nothing against you, but I mean, I wasn't a a big time golfer until you got me back into the sport. And I have really gotten into a big thing of golf again. And I'm really thankful that you got me back into it. But literally, with their lightweight and stretchy material that hungs your body, you'll feel good, cool, while looking just as cool in the say at least me and josh have been stopped a lot lot of times on the golf course like there was one time i'll never forget it i was hitting my seven iron and there was a guy on a golf cart that came up to us and said hey right before i swung and then all of a sudden thinking in my head did you really just come and do that but he wanted to know where we got the polos and then i literally did one thing pointed at you and literally they went onto the website right next to us and they went and bought some polos literally like I said, our polos are guaranteed to make you look, feel better, but it's just up to you on your golf swing just because I keep telling myself every time I wear a golf polo, it's going to make me better. But um, sometimes it does, sometimes it don't. Um, on a hot summer day on the golf course, there's no polo that you seriously want to wear but Mahler Bros golf polos. But even like outside of golf polos, there's a large catalog of polos designs, those who want to have a loud design, and others, those that went on a stumble and sleek looking design. They also have fun t-shirts. Like I said, I'm wearing, I would stand up and show in the back, but just go over to mallabros.com and you will definitely look. But outside of, like I said, t-shirts, polos, hats, tumblers, and so much more on the golfing experience. And guys, I'm going to drop a bomb here with using mallabros.com. If you use the code down below in the description, use rising to that is R I S I N G T O you will get 15% off on your order. So go to MahlerBros.com for 15% off. And even the one thing that Josh has talked about before, but we are also a lot of coffee drinkers. And we like to drink coffee in the morning when we get an early tea time. And go over to MahlerBros.com, like I said, and you will find Mahler Bros coffee. I drink Mahler Bros every day before I get up for work in the morning. And I tell you what, I've had a lot of coffee, and Josh has had a lot of coffee as well. There is not a lot of things that you can compare Mahler Bros to, but I sincerely have fell in love with Mahler Bros coffee. There's really so much different types of coffee. There's the Ace Blend, the Bogey Blend, and even the Single Serve Shots. And Single Serve Shots, they're unbelievable. Like I was first a little skeptical about it, but then I tried it, and I looked at Josh, and I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever had in a while. But literally, guys, there's so much you can go look at on MahlerBros.com. Like I said, go to MahlerBros.com and go use the code R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O 50% off. And I will tell you what, like I 
tell everyone at Big Frig, you will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. No, man, that really is great stuff over there. Uh, and like you said with the coffee too, that was something I was I was nervous about trying it out. I didn't really know how it was gonna how it was gonna reach out to people. But it's a golf themed coffee, and the first that we know of. And and it's it's really taken a lot of people by surprise on, on how good it is, and and mm-hmm. even myself, uh, I really like it. Like you said, the the, the single I, I call them the single. Uh, let's see, what did I call them? The single shots because uh, there's shot. different shots. You got the approach approach uh, shot, uh, so you've got those little single shot cups. Uh, the approach shot, I think, is my favorite on those two. So go check it out. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's jump over to the NFL. There's an NFL game going on right now. Uh, we don't. We're not going to be able to give you a recap on it because it's currently going on for us in current time. But we are going to give you a recap of all these other games. We're going to start off with Sam Franklin Jr. giving the Panthers their longest defensive touchdown in team history with a 99-yard pick six. Takes it all the way to the house. And hey. Looking over at Kirk Cousins, good job to you, man. You ran all the way down there. I didn't even know Kirk Cousins had that kind of wheels, but you ran all the way down there, <laughs> blown up, uh, just no chance. And uh, but, anyways, uh, you know, just a, a huge touchdown that really helped the team get off to a fast start for the Panthers. They get out, they were winning thirteen to zero, and they're feeling good about it. And then Sam, uh, sorry, not Sam, but uh, Kirk Cousins does Kirk Cousins uh, things. And works his magic, comes back, uh, pulls off the win, and I, I mean the Vikings—they're—they're—they're they're, they're gonna be that tough team that's just gonna stick around just good enough. But ultimately, the Vikings end up coming away with this one, uh, and they end up winning twenty-one to thirteen, scoring twenty-one unanswered points. So uh, just an amazing, amazing way for them to to pull out the win there. But I mean, Jeremy, there's all kinds of. Uh, there's all kinds of, of uh, you know, smack talk about Kirk Cousins and people people hate Kirk Cousins. They say he sucks, but the numbers don't lie. Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback and he leads teams to, to victory. Uh, and and I, I think Kirk Cousins is the kind of quarterback you want on your team because he's a winner. Uh, and I can't take that away from him. I think he wins. He just doesn't win the big ones yet. Uh, and I don't know if he ever will, but I think he's a good quarterback when you look at it overall. I don't like the hate the, the towards Kirk Cousins. I get it, but he may not be the best-looking quarterback, but I think he's a, a very good quarterback. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Kirk Cousins, literally, you can probably write a book off of how much love and hatred that there is for Kirk Cousins. But like you said it the best, Kirk Cousins, he is a good quarterback. I mean – like you said, he just ran 99 yards after realizing he made an error and obviously leading to a touchdown. And, um, yeah, he may or may not have gotten lit up and looking like a bird hitting a windshield down the highway. But um, Kirk, outside of that point, Kirk Cousins, he definitely, he definitely brings his A game every single week. I know, obviously, you look at the stats – and he performs like like he usually would on his full potential. But Kirk Cousins, he gets so much he gets so much of a bad rep just because of the performances that he brings into the game. But you look outside of that, Kirk Cousins is such a humbling person. There's so many people in the NFL that are the exact same type that they don't get the baddest of rep like Kirk Cousins does. I mean, I'm standing up for Kirk Cousins. Take it for granted, I'm a Cincinnati fan, but I mean, still, you look at these other teams, you have to show some respect for what these guys go through. Kirk Cousins, he takes so much beating week after week after week. And I mean, literally, you can, like I said, you can write a book on how much people love and hate Kirk Cousins, but at the end of the day, Kirk Cousins is still a good quarterback, and the record and everything may not show, but at the end of the day, he still performs to his full potential week in and week out. Yeah, yeah, and I think he's just good enough to get you those wins. Um, but let's go ahead and move on over to the Bills. Absolutely. An, an amazing uh, victory for the Bills. Looking at the Dolphins and look, looking at what they did last week against the Broncos, putting up 70 points in the NFL. Uh, this is no, no <laughs> joke. You know, so looking at, at what the, the, the Bills had to go against, they, they were going against a team that was hot. They were rolling. They were ste- They were looking to steamroll. The Bills. Uh, I think there was a little bit of maybe a fatigue from last week, uh, but on top of that, I just think the Bills just played really good. Their offense played outstanding, uh, and and looking at what they were able to do overall as as a whole in this game, uh, they they looked great. They ended up winning forty eight to twenty. So if you were smart like myself and smashed that over, 
uh, you hit that over pretty easily there. Uh, and I was just looking. I thought this is two very good uh, offenses. But Josh Allen, this is a dude that that he started off and people were, were trash talking Josh Allen uh, week one because he had those picks. He comes out, throws 320 yards, only four incompletions, but he threw four touchdowns. So an amazing showing for the Bills. They were able to steamroll the Dolphins, a very hot team right now. And that, that defense for the Bills is starting to click. Absolutely. But, I mean, looking into this game, there was so much that um, people were thinking that, okay, after seeing a performance like what Miami just recently did to Denver Broncos, I am sorry, Carson, I have to bring it up again. But um, looking at this this new week going against the Buffalo Bills, it was a complete different game. I think they um, they want to see what a 20 20- – they wanted to see what a 20 piece L looked like and they kind of found it. But I mean, also I wanted to throw out another thing. It was, I know it probably spoke to a lot of people like you, Josh, me and Blake, who's not here. He had something come up, but I mean, seeing DeMar Hamlin come back and being suited up in a Buffalo Bills uniform again, that definitely warmed and touched a lot of people's hearts to say the least. But looking at the game, you really look at the overall performance from Josh Allen. He was a dog. Don't get me wrong. He's already a dog to begin with, but I mean, like, you said after week one having that that game that he doesn't want to relive again and I think he's performing to his full potential right now and I know it's only early but you have this long of a season to begin with and he's definitely going to be putting up numbers like this again but even looking at the wideouts like Stephon Diggs breaking those two tackles and running it to the house that was a great touchdown and looking at the overall running game their running game was performing pretty well as well but I mean they definitely they definitely are putting up their – showing their full potential right now. They're on their A game, and they're definitely a team to watch out for, to say the least. Yeah, like you said, it really was really cool to see uh, DeMar Hamlin back on the field too. That was that was really fun uh, to be able to see him come back Marsh out Norm, there. baby. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, just overall just an amazing performance by, by him. But let's jump over to the Rams-Colts because this wasn't a game I was really interested in watching. Uh, I, I, I am happy to see Anthony Richardson came back into the game. But uh, it was just not mm-hmm. one of those games that was on the, on the top priority for me. And so I didn't watch a whole lot of it. But I was able to catch some of the highlights and looking at it. And Puka Nakua, uh, Puka Doncic himself, uh, the, the man <laughs> who, who puts up some big You just love saying his name. Uh, he has had an amazing rookie season so far. Had even bigger of a game uh, this, this week. 163 yards on nine catches, including the game-winning touchdown there towards the ends. And the Rams end up beating the Colts. Uh, in, in, a, in a really fun game. And I, this is one of them, like I said, not one of the top games, but they end up going into overtime and making it a very fun game because they end up going to overtime winning 29-23. to 23. Uh, But Puka Nakua, uh, the, the dude, Puka Doncic, he's, he's looking good, man. Dude, he's looking unbelievable right now. But I want to get my hats off to the Colts for coming back. Of a, correct me if I'm wrong. It was a 21-point deficit for for coming back in time and sending it overtime. Correct, Josh? Yeah, I believe so because they I know they were down. Uh, it it might have been more than 21. It might have been like 23. Uh, it was something like that. They were they were. Yeah. I know for sure they were down by 20 points. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, like I, I was in the same boat. It wasn't a high priority game. I didn't get a chance to watch it, but. Literally, from what the highlights that I saw, they were definitely – the Colts were definitely coming late in the game, obviously. You can see the momentum was rolling. They weren't wanting to come out of this game with an L, but unfortunately, getting it, getting into overtime, that was kind of like in my version of getting the W a little bit. I know the score obviously says differently, but, I mean, you look at this kind of an outcome for what they came back and tied the game and then getting into overtime. It was a great overall game, and my hat's off both to – both teams, and it was a fun game to watch from what I saw for the highlights, and the, we hopefully we can see more games like that to come during this season. Yeah, absolutely, uh, and and it's 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 fun to see rookies shine the way that Puka has so far. Oh, absolutely, um, but, and, and watching him at BYU too. I, I loved it whenever he was able to be on the field at, at BYU and what he was able to do there. Mm-hmm. But let's jump over to the MVP, the guy that we got to give it to because it was Christian McCaffrey. He's got to be if if you had to give the MVP to anyone before the season was even halfway CMC, over baby. it's CMC Christian McCaffrey looked amazing he got himself a hat trick and I believe he got all three of those touchdowns in the first half if I remember correctly so he watch did. the way that he runs 
every time he touches the ball, you just expect a 20 yard gain. Um, but they were able to whoop up on the cards and, and beat them 35 to 16. Yeah, I know the Cardinals aren't a good team. They're not the worst team because I think the Bears are now. Uh, but looking at, at, at what they were able to do against the cards, very, very happy with how, how they looked. Um, but if I were to tell you that between, so Brandon Ayuk had a very good game. Um, but if I were to tell you that between Debo Samuel and George Kittle, you were only going to re- record one catch between the two players, you probably wouldn't have thought it was a very good game, but that's just how explosive this offense is. Brock Purdy looking good too. Uh, the 49ers defense doing what they do best, just playing defense. Uh, so, I mean, just another really good showing by the, the 49ers. And dare I say, one of the best, I, w- I would say the 49ers, uh, the Eagles, uh, man, I don't I don't really know who else you really put above them right now. I feel like 49ers and the, the Eagles, I feel like those are the two best teams right now. Absolutely. I mean, Mr. Irrelevant who does all you can really say, but I mean, literally welcome to the CMC show is what I literally felt like I was watching because Christian McCaffrey was just being like Marshawn Lynch and he was performing beast mode to say the least. Christian McCaffrey, he is such a, he has such a gifted talent, obviously. See his running ability. He is freaky fast. I'm not saying he's like a Tyreek Hill fast, but I mean, for a running back like Tyreek, I mean, Tyreek Hill, like for a running back like Christian McCaffrey, he definitely has wheels to say the least. But I mean, you look on the other side, Arizona, they're not the better bird team, but I mean, they still put up at least a couple points to say the least. And that was, that was good for their standards, but I mean, you go against a San Francisco team, like I said, with Christian McCaffrey, then Emmanuel San- Manuel Sandal, and literally they were just all clicking and connecting and making everything literally like going through like a hot knife through butter, to say the least. Everything was just going their way, and it was just an overall great game for the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and uh, I, I just don't see a team that's been looking as whole as they are because their offense is clicking. And like I said, I think they, they still yep. have one of the toughest defenses. If they can stay healthy, which that was really the, the problem last year in the playoffs, if they can stay healthy, yep. they are the best team right now. I, I don't know who can really beat them. Uh, and they're, they're, I think this upcoming week, I think they go against the Cowgirls. So it's going to be fun to see, <laughs> see how they, they play there. Um, but let's go over to the Chiefs because another team that I think is still the one of the best teams, they're the reigning champs. you got to give them the, the, the benefit of, of the doubt. They have players that don't play good and still walk out with uh, a, a, a good game overall because uh, Pat Mahomes has a bad day but still shows his IQ with the slide there at the two-yard line. Very good move, but sports books were whooping everybody's butt all weekend long. And yeah, thanks, Patrick. Steps in again, and it was all you needed to do to do was to score that touchdown, and so many people win money, and he just doesn't care. Uh, he doesn't care about them one bit. But did you know that there was a celebrity in the house there at the Chiefs game, Jeremy? Who? Yeah, there was. It, there was Ryan Reynolds, uh, Blake Lively, yeah, and Hugh Jackman. There was, there was three oh, amazing celebrities in the house yesterday. It was, it was really cool to see that. Uh, and then Aaron Rodgers was there too, the little, you know, the, the Green Bay diva himself. Uh, so it, it just all kinds of celebrities in the house. It was, it was really fun to see those celebrities. Um, but yeah, yeah I mean, really cool. seeing Kelsey come back in and seeing that he, he kind of had a, a good game overall. It's just Patrick Mahomes was off, man. Uh, he, he did not look good one bit. I, I, I think that may have been the worst. I have ever seen Patrick Mahomes play in my life. And for Swifties out there, they're probably thinking Zach Wilson's a good quarterback. <laughs> he's not. I've got news to break to you. He's not a good quarterback. He played better than Patrick Mahomes then. Patrick Mahomes went 18 for 30, 203 yards, a touchdown, two interceptions. Uh, just terrible. But Isaiah Pacheco, the dude, I, if I remember oh. right, he's a seventh round pick. Seventh round pick. Mm-hmm. That dude is is phenomenal. He had 20 carries, 115 yards, and a touchdown. His touchdown was so fun too. He, my my dad and I were laughing at him because he just ran down so angrily. He just like was stomping down the field and like high knees and just gets into the end zone, has his little leap. A, a really good game by the Chiefs. It showed that even if Patrick Mahomes sucks, the team is still good. And and he did. He sucked yesterday. Yeah, absolutely. Then. I was one of those people that uh, that lost some money. So thanks, Patrick Mahomes. I hope I get my money back. Um, but no, literally, that was 
not Patrick Mahomes, to say the least. Literally, I know, obviously, it started with the first interception, the little rainbow floater that he knew he threw way, way, like five yards at least short. Then you know he was eating himself up and he was trying to get himself back. But then he threw – what do you throw, three overall interceptions for that game, Josh? I think just two were recorded. Um, I th- two? I know okay. there was another turnover, though, but I don't remember if that was his or not. Uh, yeah, I, I think like he remember, I don't think it was, but, but I, I think he just threw two turnovers. Uh, just he, yeah. he did not look good at all. Yeah, but I mean, Patrick Mahomes, that was definitely not the normal Patrick Mahomes we see week in and week out. But I mean, I do want to give myself a little shout out because I know earlier in the year we were talking about our top five people to be aware of. And I know I mentioned Isaiah Pachanko. Then literally so far, he's definitely showing up for the Kansas City Chiefs to say the least. But I mean, there was, I remember, I can't remember exactly the numbers, but going af- outside of the first two, ha- first two quarters, uh, Patrick Holmes' stats were higher than what you saw. Then I think what's his name only had like 59 yards. And then going into the third quarter, they were one yard shy of each other. What the heck? Taylor Swift was probably sweating bullets to say the least. Um, but no, that was literally not the normal Kansas City Chiefs that we usually see week in and week out. And they, in my opinion, they were lucky to get off what they had. I know, obviously, the the late interception that didn't help. And obviously, what's his name saying it's my fault, bro, on the sideline. That's that's one thing you never want to do and get yourself in, in that kind of a situation. I know his teammates are all around saying it's okay, bro. We're all going to have those kind of games, but it's not your fault. It's not a one person show. It's a team effort. We all got to, we all got to stay in this together. And this is nothing on your fault. We all just didn't perform to our full potential, but going outside of that game, you just got to stay in that kind of positive mentality and just not get yourself down the hole. Just because if you do, it's going to show and you could keep making those errors like Patrick Mahomes did to say the least, Josh. Yeah, yeah, I just uh, it was it was good to see the team around him still perform well, and the defense just didn't Absolutely. look the, the defense didn't look as good as they should look right now either. I think that that defense needs to step up. Chris Jones can't be your only player on defense making big plays, yeah. but you know I felt like in the first quarter the defense was looking really good. They were looking solid, getting back there and putting pressure. After that, it just seemed mm-hmm. like they just didn't get any pressure back there. But uh, we, we can rest no. assured. I think the Kansas City Chiefs are going to do just fine. I don't care that they they got close uh, and, and they, they're, they're winning these close games or anything like that. I don't care that they lost to the Lions. They're going to come back. They're going to be on the top of their game when it comes to the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But, guys, that's all we got for you today. Uh, we were able to keep this one somewhat short. Uh, it's tough getting through college football, man. Uh, we're going to have to figure something out so we can get through more college football and not have to worry about cramming everything in uh, for recaps. But we, we only have two, uh, two episodes and then our live show uh, every week that we can bring you right now. That's as much as we can, we can do for you right now. But guys, we thank you all so much for tuning in, for giving all of your support, for watching, listening, whatever you're doing. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that like button as well. If you're already subscribed, that like button is right there. I, I, I keep on seeing like where, we, we, we might have several thousand views and only maybe a couple hundred likes. We need to improve that. Let's get that, that ratio up a little bit. But if you're listening on Apple mm-hmm. Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. That is the best way to help us over there. And if you are uh, you know, looking for, for to support us just a little further, you can go over and follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, X, uh, whatever that is now today. And you can, you can go and follow us on there. We're going to keep on pumping out more content for you guys, give you guys more value out of our sports show. We thank you all so much for your support, and until next time.